Hey, this is Don McGrath, creator of MasterRockClimber.com. I wanted to share with you something that I observed this last week when climbing with my friend Tom in the gym. Tom uh, climbs at around the 10 plus, 11 minus level on a top rope. He's a young, strong guy who uh, wants, to get, got, wants to get better and be able to lead at those levels outdoors. So we were climbing together, and while Tom was climbing, I noticed that every once in a while I would see his foot slip off a hold unexpectedly when it looked like he was in full contact with the hold. So I began watching more closely. And one thing that I began to notice is that often Tom's foot would begin sliding when his heel would drop below his toes on a hold. So his toe would be in full contact with the hold and his heel would drop and his foot would slide off the hold. So, you know, I, I began watching this and I started thinking about it, went back to some high school physics and think I have some insights to share with you that I think will be useful. So um, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, Watch this clip and the climber on the right, and you might see a couple instances where his heel drops below his toes. Okay, did you see it? I think you did. So let, let's delve a little bit more deeply into this. Okay, let's talk about the ideal case. The ideal case is when, and please don't make fun of my artistry, I'm, I'm not a very good artist, but uh, I hope you get the concept. So this is a hold and this is your foot. A pretty funny looking foot, but it's a foot nonetheless. The ideal case is where you are squarely on top of the hold and all of your weight is pushing down on the hold and the hold is pushing uh, back on your foot with equal and opposite force, okay? And the dropped heel case is one where your foot, your heel drops below your toes, causing your foot to become a skew on the hold. So let's go and look at these in a little more detail. Again, I'm not gonna get too scientific, but I do employ a little bit of uh, high school level math to explain this, and I hope to give you some tips as to how to avoid it. Okay, so let's look at this ideal case. The ideal case is where your foot you're pushing down with all of your weight, um, this force F1 on the hold, and because things are, are not moving, things are in stasis, Newton tells us that those forces have to be equal and opposite, okay? So this is the ideal situation, and one thing to note is that the force F1 e equals your weight, okay? It equals your body weight. Now let's look at the case, which is a lot more complicated, where you, uh, you drop your heel. Okay, so this red arrow is the force due to gravity. It's your weight. It's always going down, right? Force due to gravity is always down. The, the, the hold has to push back up in that same direction with an equal opposite force for things not to be moving. That's what Newton told us. Okay, so, uh, but because there's, because your those forces, uh, because the force F1 is not um, perpendicular to the surface, um, what you end up, what ends up happening is you end up generating, breaking up the force into some components, if you remember high school physics, okay? So this force F1 is broken up into a couple of forces. The normal force, okay, this black arrow, uh, it's called Fn, and then another force which is acting to pull your foot off of the hold, okay? That's what vector algebra tells us, okay? So it turns out because your foot isn't moving, there's a force FF that counteracts this black arrow that's trying to pull your foot off, off of the hold. It's called FF. And uh, let's talk about that a little bit. The reason that, um, that your foot doesn't slide off the hold is because there's friction. And this force FF, as it turns out, is the coefficient of friction, it's this mu symbol here, times the normal force, okay? So that is the force that's holding your foot on the hold. If there were no friction, your foot would slide right off the hold. 
Okay? So the end result is that you can only push against the hold with this force Fn, which is smaller than F1. Okay, so you can't push on the hold as, as hard. And then you also have this friction this frictional force which is holding your foot on the hold, and that and the, the fact that it stays still is dependent upon the coefficient of friction, which is purely um, dependent upon the properties of your the rubber on your shoe and the hold. Now, as your foot begins to rotate more and more and more like this, um, it's much more highly likely that your foot's going to skate off that hold. Or if that is a slippery hold, your foot does not have to go very far before it slides off. Okay, so basic, simple high school uh, vector algebra and physics will tell you that having your foot askew on a hold is not a good thing. Okay, especially if you're trying to push up. Okay, so I hope that gave you some insights as to why, th why that's not good, and I hope you can begin to look for that and recognize it, that when you're coaching your partner or when your partner's coaching you. Now, so what am I going to do? What, what can you do about it? Okay, well, here's a couple of tips. Okay, when you climb, think about keeping your heel even with or above your toes. Okay, it's actually much easier to keep your heel above your toes than even with, even with this kind of, kind of a hard thing to do because you've got to be so precise. But think about keeping your heel above your toes. Second, practice heels up. As you're warming up and you're standing, stand there and just lift off the ground. Lift your heels off the ground and think that that's the way you want to be. When you're, when you're on a climb, when you're on two footholds, you want to be just like this with your heels slightly above your toes. That should be the feeling you have on a climb. So get used to that sensation. Get used to being able to engage those calf muscles to lift you up. Okay. Secondly, I remember seeing an article a long time ago. J.B. Trebeau was saying that one of the keys uh, that he felt in his climbing was when he would push with his feet, he would really, really push down with his toes. And so again, really pushing down with your toes will again tend to bring your heels above your toes. Well, I hope you found this useful. I certainly had fun putting it together and thinking about it. And I hope you were able to put some of these two tips into use. And uh, till next time, climb strong, climb well, climb masterfully.